Yo. <coughs> Your mic comes up too far. How's that? Yo. Mm. Ah. Yo. So the final episodes of Late Bloomer aired just this last Friday, and since I had talked about the first two episodes after they dropped, I thought I'd offer my final verdict now that the entire season just finished up. I ain't going to get too deep into the story or episode details, but I should go without saying that there's going to be spoilers ahead. So consider yourselves warned. I'm going to start this by saying I actually like the show. And part of that may be because I wasn't expecting much from it. Now, I know that comes across as a bit of a hater ass comment, but it, honestly, it's not. It's not intended to be. It's not a feigned backhanded compliment either. Truth is, I just didn't know what to expect from the show going in. And since I didn't grow up on Just Rain skits, I wasn't too sure if this was just going to be an extension of like what he was been doing in the past, or if this was going to be some kind of biopic based off of that time. It's like walking into a fusion restaurant for the first time. You kind of expect something familiar, but still have no idea how the whole fusion thing of things is going to work. Yeah, I'm not sure where I'm going with these analogies, but the show satiated my appetite and it didn't leave me annoyed or pissed off for giving it a try. See, as someone who didn't grow up on Just Friends videos, I was happy that this thing wasn't just an extension of that era. I'm sure for some others though that this fact may actually count as a knock against it. It's like when a rapper drops an album after so many years and it's different than all their old shit. And then they come back with a whole new style and you know, you actually did the new style more than you did the old. Which I guess could be true for any artist really and since writing is an art and so are videos, well, bleh, that an analogy kind of fulfills itself. Like I said, I'm not sure where I'm going with these so just bear with me. All I'm really trying to say here is that just meets new style and growth here was refreshing. The show felt way more grown up, uh, there's this maturity to it and I think that's what kept it going for me. It talked about things that I think everyone in the community could to some degree relate with or is at the very least familiar with. Like the age old Punjabi story of the underachieving son not living up to the sacrifices of the father and family's expectations. Or you know the anxious overachiever too afraid to piss anyone off and afraid to take control of their own life. See, I thought both of those story arcs were well written and thought out. As far as characters though, I actually enjoyed Sunny the most. The ever relatable dude who is constantly underestimated but Loki is the most put together and who everyone ends up leaning on when they need something. To that end, work to my boy Mugzio. But like, all things considered, I think the main story arc in season one, it delivered. Look, I have no idea how much it delivered or how relatable this is outside of the Punjabi community. And I know just meet this Kashmiri, but I hope there's something broader for people to connect with to help give Crave the numbers it needs to renew the show. See, when it comes to the acting, I did see some mixed and even polarized reviews online. But for me, like the parents definitely stood out. I think the dad and mom both killed it. Ashley, Ashley Ganger, Ashley Gang, Ganger? I don't know how to pronounce it, I'm sorry, as Mavi was also decent, but like I said before, I think it was Sunny and the dad who were like my standout favorites. I even I thought just me did a good job, but Albie was kind of surprised his character was as low energy as he was. Maybe something about him just didn't align with my preconceived notions of who I thought his character was going to be. Guess I went into thinking he'd be more of a comedic character, but instead he hit us with more of a serious dramatic thing, just flexing his acting depth, I guess. But yeah, he wasn't bad, just different from what I was expecting going in. Neil was a character I related to least. Maybe I just couldn't think of a Neil growing up or in my own life to attach with, either the actor or the character. But yeah, I did find the same character over the top though. I don't know, I just couldn't really get behind it. He did at times feel a bit borderline insulting, but I won't totally dismiss that there are dudes out there in our community like that. Or that, you know, that's genuinely how some people see things within Sangat. I just thought he was overdone and that whole Jedi talking style was just way too meme and cartoonish. Look, I know I'm hard on you. I know that's hard for you because you respect me so much. But your video was truly inspiring. Actually, that's probably why I just didn't like the character overall. He was just too cartoonish and memey for no other reason it seemed other than to be laughed at. Or maybe I'm just being overly sensitive about it. I just couldn't help but feel like I was getting mocked by him. And like I did appreciate that they touched on some of the more modern headlines like they were flirting with the drug abuse issues and hopefully in the second season they can really go more into stuff like that. And I don't know why I got such a kick out of the TikTok realtor aka Just Breathe. He just reminded me of all the men's on TikTok today. I especially appreciated the dad's reaction to him. But I don't TikTok videos I don't understand. All in all, I enjoyed watching the series and I'm glad it exists. If for no other reason than as a kind of testament towards a snap in time of what growing up as a young Sardar juggling the world is like, you know, in this last decade. And I honestly think there's just so much more room for stories that can be shared. 
including like being born and raised in a mixed society, then going through a huge demographic shift where you're no longer the minority, but now you're the majority uh, everywhere. You know, Punjabi culture going from the fringes to just being everywhere and then like diving deeper into just like the substance abuse stuff and crime within the whole community itself. Either way, I just see a lot of potential for the second season and more stories which are worth keeping the show on for. Even if the show isn't The Sopranos or an HBO mega hit, I think having content that captures even a parcel of that South Asian youth experience is dope and you know, it's something that's necessary. With how much things have been changing out here, even in the last decade with the demographics, like I said, I feel like the experience and realities growing up or the next generation coming up are gonna be so much different than, you know, my own boomer ass. But hey, I'm here for it. And I'm all for people wanting to capture and share these stories and feeling like they're able to. As always though, let me know what you think in the comments, drop your own reviews, favorite moments and characters and you know, what you liked about the show. And if you didn't, let me know that too. Also, if you're into these kind of videos, be sure to hit me with a like and consider subscribing to help boost us within the magical algorithm. Till the next one, peace.